Can for I what ask it is. you? Because um, I'm thinking, oh, what a whole the audience is thinking here. Yeah. How does sex addiction manifest in for different people? Is it like addiction? Is it prostitution? Is it um, asking your partner for extreme demands? Um, Keep going. On. <laughs> <laughs> it's on. all of them. It's abs- There's there's probably an hour alone mm. in in actually explaining how it does manifest. Like I I don't think you can pinpoint exactly. Like people use sex workers, mm. um, people use pornography. It's whatever, and I think the reason we, we kind of stuck with the salt is that sex and love therapy, it, it mightn't exactly define as an addiction. It might be your relationship with sex. Mm. What kind of damage is, is, is porn doing to young people? That, like, it's so accessible at the moment. Everybody has a phone, and you, all you have to do is just type in a, a name or a word on the phone, mm. and it'll come up. And you have kids as young as, I don't know, I don't know, well, 8, the, 9, 10, 11, whatever. The, the report recently coming out of, I, I, I think some paper in the law I was reading it, was they're saying 8. Okay. That, that's when they're starting watching it. Mm. Now, you'll think of the damage that that does to a child's brain mm. watching and what like what used to be an extreme porn before, or hardcore porn, is now the norm. Mm. It's now the norm. So the effect that's had, like a lot of the people that I'd be working with today would be in our age group. Yeah. When back in the day, it was a magazine and yeah. the effects it has had on them. But now you, I'm starting to see more and more younger people and they had access to internet. Now, because years ago, if somebody in the estate had, yeah. had a video, <laughs> it might get passed around or a magazine, you know? Magazine. But now, but now a child, if a child has a smartphone with Google on it, they're exposed to it, you know, unless you have restrictions on the phone. Anything, and I've heard anecdotally from a nurse um, mm-hmm. of young adolescent girls coming into the A&E with rectal damage because of yep. anal sex with no lubricant. Yep. Because the boys are looking at the porn, they think that this is appropriate behaviour and this is real life and this is what we can do. Yep. There's research done in the States actually to back that up in, in some of the universities in the States. That yeah. That's what girls are presenting with. So I, I think Ireland and kind of a motivator for me to start SALT was that and kind of the reason I, I joined up as well, I kind of myself and the Sexual Health Centre joined up, was that we can see what's coming, you know, and I, I, I don't want to think that we're going to be 10 years down the road thinking, shit, like we should be doing something about this, mm. you know. I want us to be kind of ready for what is going to be coming because it's here now, it, mm. it just hasn't really, like, like I, I the way I'd, I'd look at it is we had no advertising, not a card, not a flyer, we had nothing. I think only recently the Secretary Health Centre did put out some some social media um, but at that stage we were almost practically full anyway mm. um, and people were still coming word them out mm. you know so yeah. like it's already there um, it's concerning but I think where do you <sighs> s- where, where do you see it in, in, in five ten years time do you see in, do, can you see this expanding and being brought into the counties because salt of, yeah because yeah. it seems very could very you, very important could you like go to dublin or donegal or wherever and train psychotherapists so they can deliver the program that's that's the plan yeah. that is more or less the plan um that we will be training people in in delivering the program now it, it's psychotherapists with a good background of addiction um you really do need a good background in addiction for mm. understanding an addictive process, understanding addiction, you know, in, in general. Um, like the way I, I kind of set this one up is there's, there's almost four legs to it. There's the assessment, there is the, the psychoeducation 10 week program. And then there's a group where basically you're, you're helping somebody develop as themselves along with um, undoing the sex addiction or or the sexual beliefs or or whatever is going on there's the we call it problematic use of pornography whatever is going on Mm. that you have you have a group for that and then if you want to go on further there is another group um where it's more of your own personal development where we kind of say look we've kind of pretty much dealt with the sexual side of it but to keep growing as a person there's another group now at the moment that group is full mm. because like some of the people who, who've been coming to the groups have stayed in the groups um 
I would say they're doing exceptionally well. Some of them were there three or four years and they just enjoy the group therapy. Yeah. You know, it's not like the sex part has gone out of it. They understand the sex part of it, um, the the addictive part of it. They've dealt with it. It's more their own development now is what they're looking for. Um, so, And the group, <clears throat> as it sounds to me, being in a group like that and talking about whatever's going on for you, mm. you know, um, it helps the people in the group to, to feel like they have a relation you know they're not their own mm -hmm. you know it, it sounds fantastic it's like mm -hmm. an a group you walk into but a is a mm -hmm. but as james said earlier sex in this country mm. it's like you don't talk about it no. you know there's a lot of shame surrounds it mm -hmm. you know um i think that may as that may as well explain why the people in your group tend to be in their 30s and 40s because you have to have a certain level of maturity to address mm -hmm. it and we might find it hard to get the most at-risk people, which would be the younger people, yeah. to come in because it's such a hard thing to talk about from. I have come across a few, and they've been very open, but only because to the point of where their minds have gone. Because they're, they're kind of at that, when we used to talk about rock bottom, do you know what we used to say to a rock bottom? You say a person, a person doesn't have to be at rock bottom. Um, but it's when people have gone to that place where I, I just can't take it anymore, and they can see the damage it's doing. So people are coming younger um can i bring up a couple of taboos do pedophilia mm -hmm. rape yeah these type of things mm -hmm. do people present to them with you no um salt is very different okay yeah. so like uh, patrick heron's had three levels okay um the the two you've described there would be in level three we don't work with level three yeah that's that's beyond our it's realm, very like, specialist like a very specialist um we work on people with, with what we say level one, you know, or maybe some degree of level two where it's kind of exhibitionism, that kind of stuff, um, where people are just doing things that kind of impulsively or mm -hmm. kind of just, you know, risky behaviors, mm -hmm. risky behaviors, yeah, um, that might be frowned upon and that might be some of them might be borderline kind of criminality, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, yeah. um, but yeah, generally it's level one. So it's it's pornography, visiting sex workers. It's kind of even though that's mm, yeah. that's not criminalized. Um, yeah. A lot of the stuff from level two and three, anyway, mm. be probably that be probably in prisons. People would be working yeah. in there. Exactly. You know. Yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah. a lot of a lot of sex offenders when they come out, they mm. do probation service, and a lot of it is addressing the what what you do maybe in them. Yeah. Um, within the confines of the sentence.